Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. This time I'm going to show you how to enter and complete the Dark Palace, which is the first dungeon in the Dark World. There's no side questing involved in getting to this dungeon. You just go there, pay some money, and go in. You are required to have at least 110 rupees to get into the dungeon, and I'll explain why as we go. So without further ado, let's get started. From the Great Pyramid, you want to go ahead and walk down all the steps. Uh, you can run, but if you run on stairs, you don't actually go any faster, so it's kind of pointless. That said, there is a little bit of a speedrunning glitch that you can do. Uh, when you are walking upstairs, you can rock the D-pad uh, back and forth on left and right while holding up. So you kind of just wobble your thumb, and that gives you an increased walk speed. I'm not really sure why that works, but it does. Heading uh, east a couple screens, we're then going to head north, and the Dark Palace is essentially exactly where... Uh, the Eastern Palace was, uh, but we have to get through a bit of a hedge maze in order to actually get to the dungeon itself. So following this path, you're going to see this big kind of hedge maze looking thing. You can't really see it, but the path to follow is basically uh, just look at the dots on the hedge maze. Some of it is solid, some of it has dots poked through, little dots. That's basically the path. Basically right down and then right again uh, when you're in the maze. Kiki the monkey will start following you. Once you exit, he will ask for 10 rupees. And then if you make it to the dungeon without getting hit, he'll ask you for 100. If he does get hit, or if you get hit rather, he will run away. And then you have to go back into the hedge maze, get him again, pay him another 10 rupees. But as soon as you make it to the dungeon, he'll ask for 100. You pay him, he presses on the switch, and you're in. Starting out in the dungeon, you want to hit this switch on the west side of the room. Lift up the pot, kill the Helmosaur, and then go down the stairs. When you are down the stairs, you want to lift up the bottom left pot, press the floor switch, and then that will make a chest appear with a small key. And you can either use the mirror to go back to the entrance or just go back up the stairs and go this way. From there, you want to just head straight north, lift up the pot, get a bomb if you're running low. And then when you're in this room here, you want to kill this jellyfish, push this block over, and then we are going to get a small key out of this chest here. And then we are going to head back the same way we came. And the reason for this is because the block that we just pushed down is now on a floor below us. So that's very important to know is that there's a floor below us that we can jump uh, down to. So we're gonna take out a bomb and we're gonna blow up this crack in the floor and then we're gonna follow uh, suit. So we're gonna go down the new pit that has opened up and now we're on the lower floor, but we're on a ledge up here that is only accessible if you blow up that crack on the, on the bridge there. Use that key you got to open the door on the top side of the room. Now you're back up the floor and you can open this chest for the big key. From there, you want to jump off this platform down to the floor below. And then once here, lift up this pot, get the key, and then warp back to the entrance. I do want to mention that there is an entire other side of this dungeon that you do not need to do. It's totally optional. But in case you're running low on keys or you can't open any doors, that staircase on the right side of that uh, big room uh, near the beginning of the dungeon that we just went through, that right side has a couple keys in it. So just if you are looking for more keys, just follow that path. All right, so back where we got the first small key, we can now hop across, go over the bridge, and then into this room. This platform that we're on right here is crumbling behind us, so you need to move a little bit quickly. With this helmet sword, you want to try to kite him uh, towards you, and then uh, you'll be able to just swing your sword and uh, get a good slash and knock him off the platform. Once in this room, the compass is right there, but we're going to ignore it. There is a dark room down here with a bunch of blue rupees. Uh, there is a single arrow in that chest on the left. The chest we're after has a small key, and it's the one on the right. Okay. Keep in mind that you need at least 500 rupees to get into the next dungeon, so if you don't have at least 200 rupees at this point, um, you want to just collect everything in that room. All right, so heading back to the crumbling bridge room, we now want to use that small key and open this door, and then we need to navigate this uh, kind of pipe or railing maze. There are some uh, fire-breathing enemies in here, so you do have to be careful. That chest right there has bombs, so in case you need any, go ahead and open it. But you just want to follow this path that I'm walking on here, and then once you get to the bottom right corner of the room, open the chest for a small key, and then take out some bombs, and there's a cracked wall that we want to bomb here. I'm actually gonna overthrow and uh, miss, but plant the bomb along the wall, and then you're gonna blow up that crack, and now we can get to the big chest that was near the crumbling bridge. Inside this chest is this dungeon's item, which is the magic hammer. So once you have that, take out your mirror and warp back to the entrance of the dungeon. 
Again, if you're missing any keys, or if you can't proceed any further, go down the staircase on the right that you see here. There's a couple keys in that path. Okay, so now we're gonna head back to that big grand room uh, that we got our first small key in. Let's go ahead and go up here. And then we need to lower the blocks using this crystal switch. So you can line yourself up uh, along this chest and then just shoot an arrow across. Alternatively, you can jump onto that main platform, deal with those crazy enemies, and then use the boomerang, but an arrow is just a lot easier if you can line yourself up properly. In this room, you wanna lift the pots on the right and then uh, move this statue here onto the switch to keep it open. If you need any hearts, there are three under these pots here. In this room, we have uh, some mimic enemies. So the green ones die in one arrow shot and you can also hit them with your sword, but the red ones require two arrows. Uh, they are invulnerable to sword swings. There's a tech tight here, so you wanna let it just pass and then uh, go over here and shoot this statue with one arrow in the middle of the eye and then it will reveal uh, the entrance to the basement. So once the screen starts shaking and the staircase is revealed, we're gonna head down there. All right, so now that it is fully revealed, we gain control of Link again, and we can go downstairs. Once you're down here, you wanna take out your magic hammer, and then you want to start flipping over these enemies. They always remind me of like turtles or something like that. I played this game when I was a kid, and I always thought those were like deadly turtles or something. Okay, so. You wanna use the boomerang to hit that switch or an arrow, and then you wanna use your last small key on this uh, door here. Flip over the turtles again, and then this room here has a total of six of these turtle enemies. So I recommend uh, swinging your sword and charging it because when you do that, uh, you can essentially move in any direction uh, very easily. You can basically, it's a form of sidestepping in this game. If you have your sword uh, fully charged and out, you can just sidestep. So it, it makes uh, controlling the hammer a lot easier. And when we actually fight the Helmosaur King in a couple rooms, which is the uh, boss of this dungeon, you're gonna see why that's very, very useful. Okay, so push down this block and then warp. And there's gonna be four of these turtle enemies in this room. So there's two here and then another two. These die in either two sword slashes or another hit with the hammer. Just keep that in mind. So we're gonna enter the boss room, charge our sword, and then we're just gonna walk right up to the boss and keep using the hammer. And you can actually hold B to keep your sword drawn and then just mash Y to break open his mask. Alternatively, you can use a bomb, which I'll show you here. You can use a bomb to uh, crack the mask. So this is a quicker way of doing it, although it's much harder to line up because the boss can move. So once the mask is off, you wanna aim for the green jewel in the middle of his head and then just spam arrows into it. Uh, the boss does become a little bit more deadly in this form because the fireballs that he shoots will now split into three, and then those will split into three. And he's moving around a lot faster, and it just takes, everything's faster at this point, so you gotta be very, very careful. It's a deadly fight. But once he falls, you will get a heart container and the first crystal for your troubles. Just a heads up, in order to access the next dungeon, number two, you need at least 500 rupees. So if you can leave this dungeon with 200 or more, you are in great shape, because at the start of the next guide, I'm gonna show you an NPC to talk to and just get 300 right from him no questions asked. So if you don't have at least 200, do a little bit of farming and then get ready for the next guide and we'll cover it there. And that's it. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. You can also join my community Discord server. The link for that is in the video description below. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're looking to support this channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and on Twitch. And as always, I'll sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.